Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is Sportsman at News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the Royals' 3-2 to two loss to the trois Rivier Lions, getting the one point, though, in overtime in a game that the Royals, like Pat Richards said at the end of the broadcast, really probably did deserve the second point in this one, just like they could have against the Newfoundland Growers last Saturday night, but they didn't get the second point. They actually lost that game and were not able to get anything. So we can look at it that way and say this was obviously a positive. And from this game, after the start where it was a bad start again, but the Royals went down 2 nothing on the Nintel goal, what they were pl really playing with the boards a lot, Tra Riviere, early in the game trying to take advantage of their own boards. And it worked on that play where Redding looked kind of lost early in the game on a couple plays off of the board. But Usti in general, after having the one play that went through his legs earlier in the game on the one say that it looked like maybe he was going to be off a little bit, just like he was in the other games in this series, like the rest of the team losing 9-1 to or 5-1. to Nobody's really having a good mm -hmm. game, obviously. Mm -hmm. In this game, they really did bounce back and do a lot better and more superior because after that David Bodine goal, Charles David Bodine goal, goal they obviously did not score again until the OT, and the Royals really did a much better job at shutting them down. And in the shots were pretty much even in every period, 13-14, 10-8, um, when it came to the third, uh, in the after the first period. In the first period, it was a huge differential of 18-6 to six to Trois-Rivières. They killed us in the first period, so it wasn't a great start. But obviously, like I've said about teams, and whether it's been the Royals or the Phantoms in my previews to games, you want to have a very good start and a very good finish to game. As Kirk McDonald said, you can never have a really bad middle. That's always going to affect you just like it did on that Friday game against Newfoundland. But you can't have that really bad middle. It'll affect you. But you want to have a very good start and a very good finish. Where to this game, the Royals did have a very good finish. They just did not have the good start. So now it's about obviously balancing those things out. Because if the Royals started this game better, I think they sure as hell win this game. Richard talked about it afterwards in the broadcast that, and I agree, I think they still did deserve to win this game from how they played. Unfortunately, Sean St. Amon, who's been a killer this entire series, as well as um, Bodoin and others, um, he was able to bury one there, and then obviously also Nellis has been a killer to us this entire series, Alvin Donato, Cosima Dunoff, the list goes on. But in this game, you were really able to limit those guys better and play a much better complete game after the bad first period. And it's nice to see that spunk. It's nice to see that comeback effort because obviously that's just as important. You don't want to be down in games, but being able to rally your way back, especially after the two performances against the team in the Lions prior you wouldn't think that necessarily you would have that momentum to do that, and the Royals did. They found it, they harnessed it, and they did rally their way back. So this is really a loss that I'm not very dis like annoyed from at all because I thought the Royals, after that first period, were the team that played much better than the Lions, and there's nothing Usti could really do on a bank goal. There's nothing he could do, obviously, on the um, <clears throat> David Bodin goal that was just a nice goal there in itself. So there's just nothing you can do. And then on the break, I think he wanted to make that breakaway save. You saw from his reaction about how the shot ended up going. But those are the hardest saves in the game because if a guy doesn't hit it as hard, you're expecting him to hit it harder than he is. So then a flutter puck is easier to get past you. And then if he does hit it as hard, then you maybe pick the wrong spot, obviously, or you expected him, it looked like, to maybe flutter it or do a higher-end wrist shot or whatever have you. Obviously, no matter what, a breakaway is never going to be an easy save because it's just who's anticipating the best on the play, and he took that shot a lot earlier. I think that's really what it was, St. Amon. He thought he would come in on him a little bit more. He took the shot earlier, and he got it past him. But Ustamenko was a big reason, particularly in that first period. Reading was not like the other games, down 4-1. to one. So I definitely... I'm going to give him a star of this game and say he was a good player in this game for the Royals, having to stop 39 shots. The Royals still do, especially throughout a game in a full 60, have to defend and step up for their goaltender more, in my opinion. And obviously you have to play a better, you have to, the, the most key points, in my opinion, to anything or a start and a finish. But you have to have a solid middle where in this game, the Royals got really going in the middle and had a good finish where for part of the season, and a lot of the games we had issues in, it was having a really bad playing like dirt middle, and that is what really 
would affect the team. It was nice to see them have a very solid middle and a very solid finish and a very good finish in this game in terms of in regulation to be able to obviously get the equalizer by rookie Cam Strong is really fun to watch. And then in the overtime, uh, the Royals, they were caught in a line change. Unfortunately, St. Amant was able to get a break and he was able to bury it. Uh, that's just those unfortunate events in hockey. That's what you got to do if you think you have time to make the line change. You're going to make the line change. Reading Royals get caught, and uh, it happens. Uh, they were able to score. St. Amant, who's been a killer the entire series, was able to get another one. But again, you defended their stars. You defended the guys that killed you in the rest of these games very, very well, whether it was St. Amant himself, Ducharme, who's just incredibly dangerous, Archambault, uh, again, incredibly dangerous. Uh, you You defended these guys really well this game and shut them down. You just, it's one of those games that it happens. Sometimes you don't get the extra point that you deserve. And I think in this game, if I had to pick who deserved the extra point more, I would have to say it is our uh, Reading Royals. They honestly did earn that extra point more than this Trois Rivière Lions team in this game because they played a very great finish from the second period, honestly, which is something we haven't always seen. We've seen struggling middles. We saw a good middle and a very good finish to bring it even into OT, but then just not the icing on the cake in the overtime. And that's something that will come. It's still early in the season that after this game, our Reading Royals in terms of the standings, now in the overall league standing, um, they sit at 11 at 6-4, six, 6-4, four, six, four, four, and 1. But then in our overall division, we're still right behind the Newfoundland Growlers at 6-4, four, 4, and 1. To, they're at, they have 17 points, we have 17, or they have 24 points, we have 17, excuse me. So we're not right behind them in terms of points, but it's early in the season. We're still in a good spot right now, particularly in a division that's been only around 500 for the rest of the teams in it. So if we're able to kind of get our skates going under us again after two really bad games, grow and learn from this game that the Royals outplayed Trois Rivière, just didn't happen to get the W. Sometimes that happens. They outplayed them mightily after the first period, I should say, to be specific, since the first they didn't outplay them. But they did later on. They just weren't able to get it, got caught in a line change. It happens. That's what happens in hockey sometimes. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. I will, of course, be doing... More videos on the team, some cool, maybe just regular um, videos on certain things during the week like I did in the last couple weeks if there's moves made or what have you or whatever. But when it comes to the next time, <clears throat> I will be doing a preview. That will, of course, be a minute since our Reading Royals are now off until next Wednesday, December 1st, which they're going to be then taking on the Newfoundland Growlers in Newfoundland to continue the Canadian road trip. And that is obviously the best team in the league. But if they play like they did not in the first period, you don't want to have to have your goalie hung out to dry like that in the first. But if they play like they did in the second and the third, and for most of the OT, other than getting caught in the line change, they're going to have a very good chance against the best team in the division and one of the best teams in the league in the Newfoundland Growlers. Just keep playing like you did in the second to the closeout of this game, and you're going to be sitting pretty in most games going forward. You just got caught in a line change, and it's just so happened, and it sucks, but it is what it is. Answer back against the Growlers, at least. I want to walk out of playing Newfoundland next week, the best team in the division. I understand that, but the Royals are a very good team, too. They just got into a bad stretch for a couple games, for the two-game stretch, honestly. Obviously, they defeated Norfolk because of Hayden Hawkey's great performance last Sunday. Now it's about getting it back on the grind. You got one point. Try to get at least one point out of the first game against Newfoundland. And then try to make sure in one of those other games, you do get the two points. And then you walk out with three points from playing one of the best teams in the league. And that's a very nice outtake to have. If we could get points in every game, fantastic. But I'm just trying to look at it from a realism perspective. And I would be happy with three points. But I'll be doing previews to that game either Tuesday evening or or Wednesday. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Go Royal. This was a tough loss, but a loss that there's a lot more good to take from than there is bad. The only bad was the first period, of which Ustamenko looked like the Ustamenko of old, and we have to all remember he was off in the couple games before this, but he's coming back off of a big injury for a goaltender, 
and he's working his butt off to get back from that. He didn't have consistent reps until he was sent back down with us, obviously, last week. And then he started getting more consistent reps, and that's all that's going to really continue to help a goaltender. So I have faith in him big time going forward. And then if Patty Nags eventually comes back down, that'll be great. And then Hawkey's also a solid goaltender. Just had a bad second game. Great first game, bad second game. Obviously, I'm not judging somebody after two games in the ECHL. So everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Everybody peace out and go Royals. Thanks for watching the content. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe down below or on the up above easy to use widget. Peace out, everybody.